Hello, it's Sarah. Trying to figure out the best angle I want to do this. I'm going to do a tutorial today, and it is these little memo note notebook holders. I have a subby. She's a newbie. Pretty sure her name's Janice. Hi, Janice. And um, I mentioned in the share that I did on these that it was by um, Annette Green. She's the one who did the tutorial originally, and it was on her blog. Um, she has a, a YouTube channel, but she doesn't do a lot on that. She usually does it on her blog. So I had made a bunch of them and sold them last year at my craft show, and this one's mine. I use it all the time. Um, and they're awesome. And so I had found these little ones at my, um, these are little memo notes, notebooks, um, tablets. And I thought, well, that's kind of cute. Let me try it in a mini form. So I did make some in the mini form as well. Um, and I just played around with the um, sizes, uh, the size measurements is what I'm trying to say. And so I think I'll also share those with you at the end as well. Um, I'm going to try these at my craft show as well. I just thought, I mean, I got these at the dollar store and they're attached. So it was a little bit, you just want to be careful when you separate them because it, it kind of makes them fall apart if you don't, because the plant, they're attached, the papers are attached at the top. So that was the only thing about that. But then the other ones are made with these. These are just um, staples. This this is the recycled um, writing pads. But then I had these too. This was the only one I have left of the other ones I used, which I guess it wasn't a recycled one. But it's the uh, junior size uh, 5 by 8 inch um, writing pads. You know, they're the, I, I think they call them um, executive. I don't know. But anyway, so that's what we'll be using. I'm going to use the do the big one for the tutorial, and then I'll also share the um, measurements for the little ones as well. And I really love this one with the doily paper. It turned out so cute. So um, I'm going to go away and come back, and I'll have all my um, papers ready to go, and we'll get started. Okay, I'm back, and I've gathered up all my supplies. Uh, the first thing you're obviously going to need are these little um, paper pads that I talked to you about, and I got mine at Staples. Um, you're going to need a piece that's actually the sleeve. Um, this is a, like a change it. You can change it out. When you're done with this, when you finish with the paper pad, you can slide this out. And there's a sleeve in here that you can just reload and put. Now the only the only problem with it was um, she actually puts this decorative paper on the top of your notebook too, so that it like hides the little staples thing. Um, and I'm not going to provide extra paper. I mean, I could at least one more piece probably that would match, you know, because your pocket and your little um, the top of your notebook actually are matching paper, but. For this sleeve, you're going to need um, a piece of 4x8. So I just used craft card stock for that. 4x8, uh, cut that to 4x8. I'm, I'm kind of figuring out how I'm going to film these. I like the, um, the way the camera is now because I have room and I can see what I'm doing, but I don't know if it's good for you guys, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, the, also, so for your covers... I have my trusty old, um, it's a heavyweight card f uh, file folder, and I got these at the dollar store. These were from my dollar store, and they are a heavy weight, so I'm using those. You can also use cereal boxes, or this was um, just the shipping. Actually, this was the back of the Claudine Helmuth, um, the sticky back canvas. This is what it was packaged in, and it's just like a, I would say it's a lightweight chipboard. So I, I'm going to use that for one too. So I've already cut them, and those are going to get cut to five and a half by eight and a half. So you need two pieces of that for your covers. I'm um, going to use that this time. So I'll put that over there um, for to cover those covers. So to the paper that's going to cover your covers, you need to cut two pieces uh, of paper at six by ten. 
and I'll show you how. I mean, a lot of people, you could use the whole thing. Um, not sure. No, I think you could use like a, just make the whole thing. No, don't do it. Just do it this way for now. But you, you, those of you who are not newbies, Janice, this is for you. This is just how she did it. And I'm going to go ahead and just teach it that way. Um, the, so two pieces at six by 10. And I fussy cut out an image from this paper pack is actually, um, it's called the art collage stack. It's a die cuts with a view stack. And I fussy cut, so I'm just using kind of plain papers, but I fussy cut this little house out. That's what I'm going to put on my cover. So I thought that this paper looked nice. It was kind of, um, kind of like a sky. So I'm using that for my covers. And I also cut out uh, dream big, a couple words and things. Uh, anyway, and then this is for the inside. You're going to need one piece of pattern paper for the inside, which is eight and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. And that's going to be the whole inside of the book. Um, so a, a coordinating, but not um, too busy because you want your inside of your book to kind of be calm. Then for the pocket, you need a five and a half by five and a half inch. And for the top of that notepad, the notebook, um, two by five. So five and a half by five and a half for your pocket and then two by five for the top of that notepad. That's how she covers up her note, her notepad. Um, and then I am going to be using the Claudine Helmuth. Uh, I showed this in my last video. Where is it now? I put it, here it is. I'm, I'm on to my white. I had the um, off-white color and I'll show you the difference. This is the off-white uh, canvas. And this is the white, but I'm kind of liking the white for this project because um, it's going to be like clouds or, you know, I don't know. I think white will totally go fine with it. Um, this is the off-white or I don't know what they called it, what color they called it. Um, but I do like and recommend this uh, Claudine Helmuth uh, sticky back canvas. It's, um, I think I got this at, I want to say... Uh, online Ellen Hudson probably Ellen Hudson is an online store but I think there's you can probably find it anywhere now just not at my Michaels or they may even have it at Hobby Lobby or something I haven't looked but it is a great product there's five sheets five eight and a half by eleven sheets in here so for your spine if you don't have that <clears throat> just cut a piece of pattern paper and if you have Tyvek which is the um what what is recommended by uh i'll grab it while i'm talking about it this is um from um staples as well and it's made by dupont dupont tyvek this is a, like a shipping envelope and i got these at staples too but it is made of tyvek and it's just a really industrial product they use it for siding houses and stuff uh it's a it's waterproof and stuff like that so um, Kathy Orta always does, she, she, um, reinforces her spines, the spines of her mini albums with Tyvek. So I did that on a couple too, when I didn't have the, um, the, the, uh, canvas. Cause I just think obviously canvas is stronger. It's not going to tear Tyvek. I mean, if you have a paper spine, it may tear. So you may want to just reinforce that with some Tyvek. So, uh, you would cut that. Your spine is going to be three by 10. So you just need a piece of either the canvas at 3 by 10 or, I mean, maybe doubling up on um, cardstock would be a good idea. But it's just, you know, it's going to be open, close, open, close. So you just want it to be um, something that's going to hold up. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is um, create our covers. And to do that, just going to cover the, the uh, I am actually using a lightweight chipboard for this with this paper. And the way she does it is, and I've, I've created mini albums before where you cover, it would have a, a half inch on this side too, and you would just cover the whole thing. But I like the way she's, she's doing it because you don't really need this edge covered. You'll see how it, how it works out. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. And the way I am using wet glue, and you can use your favorite adhesive, um, that, all is up to you. Um, I actually have done it with a dry adhesive as well. Um, because I live in New Jersey and it gets humid here from time to time, I have just kind of taken to wet glue 
because um, it just stays together. I've not had a problem with it coming unstuck. Um, so, I mean, I'm just going to take my wet glue and go around the edges of one side, or one side, around the edges, on this side is what I mean. Kind of up and down, just a thin coat. This is just to kind of get it adhered onto the paper to begin with. I'm going to flip it over, and then I'm going to center it up against the one side. So that... And then just give it a second, push down, make sure it adheres. I know a lot of people, I've seen um, videos where people were using wet glue, or don't use wet glue, because they think it buckles, um, or, and I've seen that too, like when it dries, when everything's dry, some, wherever there isn't any glue under here, the paper can buckle and stuff. So I mean, it's, I am not pushing any type of glue on you, use your favorite glue, that's all I'm going to tell you. I, uh... I use different glues for different projects. Um, you know, even like hot glue. People love hot glue and they'll do everything with their hot glue gun. I just use hot glue for certain things. I love Fabri-Tac for like adhering all my ribbons and fabrics and stuff. So you're going to need to figure out what glue you like for paper. Go with it and here we go. Um, the other thing, like, for, I'm just kind of using this bone folder to kind of score this because you could go ahead and score everything first, but nothing like, I obviously, I mean, I think I could have cut this a little wider, but this is six inches. So, you know what, I'm going to take my book and just make sure. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um, I followed her measurements for this, so that's what we're going with. I'm going to go away and come back. And I actually learned this from Annette Green, this little technique. Bef when I've made um, covered covers in the past with paper, I've actually cut this away and the little corner of the chipboard would show. But the way Annette does it is she folds this corner in and you just score and get it tucked in there. And I'll do it to the other one. Just keep it nice and straight. And this way, if you would hear that down first, you're not going to see uh, the corner of your chipboard. Your chipboard will be covered whoops, with um, paper. So we'll give that a second to adhere. When I work with wet glue, I generally have a paper towel or an old, um, I call them butt wipes, an old uh, wet wipe. Uh, nearby because it does squirt out and you want to make sure it all uh, so that's nice and adhered and now I fold these up burnish that down a little bit give it a nice tight fold just so it all sticks really well when you do your glue and then you could also um, what do they call it miter these corners if you want to I mean you don't have to but it just I, I don't know. It, it's neater, and you're not going to see any of this, so it's not necessary. But I'm going to go ahead and glue this with you, and then I'll go away and do the other uh, cover and come back and show you the next step. So I just kind of put glue all along in this, and then you got to kind of uh, be ready to pick up or to wipe up some of that comes out, but Give it a second. Hold it down. My battery's blinking, so when I go away, I'll change my battery. So for Janice, she's my newbie who, who um, wanted the tutorial. I'm really happy that you did and that you asked because um, I really thought this was a super cute project. It's not a lot of work. It's pretty quick and easy, and it's such a great little gift to give teachers even. I think that's perfect little teacher gift. Um, but just a stocking stuffer for a tween that's in school. That's who I was kind of marketing them towards at my craft show. Um, just a little something that it's a little more personalized. It's a handmade gift. Um, especially if you're going to make it for your tween, it's even better because you know a little something about them to get put their um, personality in. So that's it. Now look. You can see how those corners are mitered, and you don't see 
any chipboard coming through. So I'm going to go away, change my battery, do the other one, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the next part you want to do, so I have my covers, it's basically it, and they have no paper in the middle. I've, I've removed my mat so that you can see my disgusting measure thing. Uh, but anyway, I do this because when I put the spine on, which, where did I put it? And hopefully this won't get dirty. I don't want it to get dirty. Um, I think that's glue. Um, I like to put this down. First I have to take the sticky back off. But I'll show you. And then you can kind of like, there should be a half inch in between the two covers. Okay, so I like to kind of, let's see if you can see this. I really don't want to zoom in because then I'll forget and it'll, everything else will be out of the shot. So basically, um, <clears throat> for this, like maybe I'd move it down to the quarter inch spot, right? Um, I like the dots. I'm going to go there. And then when I'm lining up this side, for instance, I know that I want to go right onto the line here. So right onto this line. And then I can follow the dots on the side to make it straight too. Let's see. Really that, okay, no, that's going to be the line there. Yeah, and then this side a half inch away so I would obviously I'd lay that down stick it down good and then this side so basically that's what you're gonna end up with so I'm gonna go ahead and um, but that's just a little tip I would use when I did my little ones because they're little they're um, let's see when I when I did these when I use sticky back canvas for these too I just put my ruler like let me try and get better angle but I just like set my ruler because I, I didn't move my mat just too lazy to move it and just laid this there kind of half inch because it's small enough that I can I'm a pretty good eyeballer I don't um, I rarely kind of make it too wonky so if you're you know pretty good at it don't worry about it but it, I just like to give you that tip this is was very helpful with me even with um, when I put on duct tape bindings before and stuff like that like it's just handy to have this uh, mat. So I'm going to, it's pretty sticky, but I'm going to try and lay it down, like I said, right in that area where I kind of have an idea. Um, and then I'm just going to take my, make sure everything's going the right direction, not upside down, and hold it above, oh, itchy eye, about like leave about a half inch to three quarters on the ends. But I'm going to try and line up right there. And right there and just set it down and kind of give it some pressure I'm gonna flip this around too because I'm just a right-handed person and I don't I think I'd rather do it from this side but I'm gonna give myself a half inch so I'm just gonna put my lines now at the line and then kind of find the half inch mark on both sides eyeball it and set it down so that's what it's really easy with the sticky back canvas it's just it's already stuck then you're just going to take the top and kind of push it down fold it down and, and adhere that and push this up and adhere that so that's all adhered now now your book is um, adhered all right so you have your spine and actually that does look a little crooked Oh well, you know what's great because I will probably put, even though I'm going to put this here, um, that'll cover it up enough. I'll put, I'm going to put um, Dream Big here too. Sorry, this is not necessary to tell you, but I'm going to put Dream Big. So it, it'll be camouflaged enough that I don't need to worry about it. But, it, you know, you, you kind of do want your spine to be straight. Like you can kind of tell that's not exactly even. But I'm such a, I wing stuff. I'm not a perfectionist. I'm definitely a good enough. I don't get worked up and crazy over it. So the next thing you want to do is add your inside cover. So I've already cut my paper down. I have it ready. I'm just going to use, like again, I'm going to use my wet glue and go ahead and adhere that. And I could do all this off camera. 
but for newbies, I like that word. Um, I think it helps to see how someone does it. Oops, too. And um, I don't know how to speed up videos and add the music and do all that cool stuff. So I do it in real time. That's that's the only thing I've ever done. Just for this, just make sure you have a uh, nice on the edges there because you don't want your edges to come up. I don't want my edges to come up. Maybe you don't mind, but I don't. <laughs> uh, center that. And there's about an eighth of an inch of room around the whole um, thing. I kind of push in the middle first, push down in the middle, and then kind of smoosh it to the edges because um, <clears throat> when we fold this, we want to make sure you have a little pliability. And I haven't made one of these in a while, so I'm hoping this is tr true. This is true. So I'm just giving it a nice, uh, ad adhere it nicely. Just give it a second. I'm going to pull in my, I'm going to let that dry, I think, before I even try to bend it. I'm going to put that aside and we'll go over to our pocket. I want to show you how I did this. Now she suggests five and a half by five and a half, so I've already cut my square, five and a half by five and a half. Um, oh, and I want to show you on my scoreboard, that's what I'm trying to get. Um, this is the little scoreboard, but I have enough room. So you're going to score at a half inch on two sides. So I've got that scored. Half an inch. I see it better on that side. On both sides because we're that's where how we're going to adhere this pocket to the page. But then to make it into a triangle, all you have to do and now I've made this line on my scoreboard. I just put I guess an ink pen in there, a marker or some sort, just so that like when it's covered up you can find that score again. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to take my both my edges here and put the corner of that on that five and a half, five line and I'm going to put the corner of this on this one and I'm going to score that. So just hold it in place and score. So now I've created my triangle, and you can actually cut it there, but I like to double over my the edge of my pocket, so I'm going to, and I should have done this before I picked it up, but I'm going to score again at a half inch, so five and a half for me, and that's where I'm going to cut now. Um, you could use your paper cutter, but I'm just going to trim it by hand, uh, because we're going to make the top of the pocket, so the pocket goes like this. We're going to make the top of the pocket like a little more secure by having this extra. Let me put my scoreboard to the side. But yeah, I, I kind of figured that out when I was playing with the, um, actually I don't remember if she doubled up her, um, her pocket, the top of her pocket I should say. And just make sure that this uh, edge is mitered enough so that you're going to be able to uh, fold it over without messing with the side of your... I don't have words today, but there. So that it's not going to mess with this side. And then you are going to have to cut a little smidge of that and a little smidge of this so that you... and you're going to cut a smidge of this and a smidge of this because that is where we're going to we're going to glue our um, see it's still sticking out a little. I'll show you what I mean. The pocket is going to be in there like this. We're going to adhere the pocket with these little tabs we just made. But see how that one's sticking out? So I'm going to cut make sure I cut that off so that it doesn't show. I think this one's up. Oh, this one's sticking out a little bit too. So I'm just going to Cut it a little bit more. So, might as well. I'm just going to glue this down. This little flat part. It's a. Um, this is just going to be the top of the pocket. It just reinforces it a little. Gives it a little more stability. So that's the top of your pocket. Well, 
well it turned off and I'm not sure where but I did adhere this down the top of my pocket and I've just made sure that not that uh, that these little tabs that we created to adhere the pocket are not going to show when you glue it down so just trim it up a little bit um, you know what I'm going to pull my I'm going to get my um, mat back in the picture here I just like this uh, I don't like that pink and get my cover and I'm just going to work this a little bit kind of bend it oh I'm not in the shot sorry okay so we're just going to I've got my cover and I'm just kind of you know what I'm going to take well the bone folder I'd rather have like something I'm using this actually that's rubber um, but like something round oh I like this brush oh this is going to rip it too um, well let's just use a bone folder and go into the that crease there and then this crease on this side and now you can see that really good and I'm going to actually push so now I've bend it so that this side shows and I'm going to do the same thing on this side and just work in that little uh, spine kind of fold it in half all right so we're good you just gotta work it we can adhere our pocket now make sure everything's going the right way okay and basically I like to just put a little glue there to kind of hold that together so I'm just going to, I'll put glue on this side first, mainly to the outside edge because that's where you want it to stay down and just kind of push that down to get that adhered and then go on this side and put it on the outside edge. See, And then just, I s kind of stick it in the corner of this pink and just that's it that will adhere your pocket I'll give that a second to dry I'm gonna bring in my pad and I'm gonna show you one what I like to do with the um if I could find my little this the sleeve to create the sleeve is put it up inside the notepad kind of center it feel it out see where that wants to fall let's see so because it gets kind of tight but that's where I think it naturally wants to be I'm gonna pull this over there's a little more over here than there is over here so I'm gonna wiggle it over try to get it try to get it even on both sides and again I am eyeballing that's just what I do I don't measure if I don't have to and it doesn't have to be exact because you're not going to see the other part of the um, fold but then I I score it now like I'm going to take this and just fold it up and really not tight like you don't want this really tight up against it give it a little play because you want to be able to slide this in and out without a problem and make sure that you can get it out and put a new one in when you need to so that's when I that's how I score it and you can see um, it's gonna it moves it's gonna be able to move in and out so now I'll take it out and I'm gonna um, just I'm gonna push it over and just now I'm gonna make it a nice sharp um, but I'm gonna make sure that it's on the loose side rather than the tight side you don't want it tight it's fine if it's a tiny bit loose I'm also gonna miter these edges just a tiny bit just because I like to do it I don't know why I just do and then I adhere this as well with the notepad in the sleeve because then you can kind of really know where it's going to sit inside your book so I'm going to put this back in 
wiggle it around and make sure it is I hope my camera's not up five minutes in the right place and then just kind of let it go to its natural all right then when we put it in you're gonna know where you want it to be so if this is gonna naturally fall into the sleeve like if I just glued the sleeve up at the top it wouldn't even go all the way up to the top so you just want to make sure like let me show you on mine just to double check check and prove my point my sleeve is not all the way up to the top it's down because I did the same thing I just kinda and you want to make sure that it's not super tight you want it to be able to come out so that's what I do then I'm just gonna adhere it and you can use double stick tape for this you can use I am just sticking with my wet glue um, that's it I just like my wet glue cover it up I guess I'll start at the bottom kind of center it on the sides at least you have a minute to fudge it and move it over if it's a little I'm gonna go down a little bit and that's it and then I'm gonna give it a nice push and give that a second to dry um, I have this two by five piece I think I don't think she scored that either I kind of forget now um, but we're going to cover this notepad with this little strip of paper. I'm going to see if that will slide out. Yep. Come on. And it did. And now I'll just give it a nice push. And set that aside. This is uh, to go over this. So I'm just going to wrap it kind of. I could, you could even measure um, from the from here to the top, and you could score probably. But I have I I don't remember doing that. Let me see if I uh, I don't know where my scoreboard is. See, I think it's fine just like this. I just bent it. Let's see. Yep. Just as long as it covers that and then I'm going to do the same thing in the back and just but it's probably about an eighth of an inch um, score and it just makes your pad match everything so super cool. Oopsie. And like I said, I mean, for my craft show, I guess I could just cut another piece of this and um, stick it in there so that they could um, do this as well if they wanted to spiffy up their notepad. So I'm just holding it on this side mainly because you're not going to see the underneath as much. Nine minutes. Get out that extra glue. Give it a burnish. And that's it. And then that is sticking out a little bit. But I mean, I and I will probably, I will trim it. Because <clears throat> I am usually a good enough person. But this is easy enough to just trim as long as I'm not going to wreck anything else. But I like that. Alright, so now your notebook's ready. <clears throat> and that's it, guys. Slide that down in there. 
and that's your little notebook cover. Now you can embellish this however you want. I am, like I said, going to put this little house on here. I'm going to use wet glue and just glue that down. I have this dream big and I have some um, hearts that are going to be coming out the chimney and I think that's it. But on other ones and which I, what I love doing is really covering the spine where the spine, like this is pattern paper that I used on this one and I re reinforced it with Tyvek. So I just grabbed a piece of paper that kind of looked like fabric to me. That's what I was going with for that. Um, where's my other one? My purple one. Um, I think I put it over here. This, I definitely, oh, this one's a great one to show you. This, I also used paper, but see how the paper's cracking a little bit? Because this paper also had glitter parts on it. It had glitter parts on it. So I would also recommend, if you are going to use paper, that it just be a nice uh, quality paper that's going to be able to bend and fold without cracking. But, um, I mean, it, it shouldn't be a problem because I, I think I backed it with Tyvek. Oh, and you know what I like, too, about this one? Can you see how I like kind of pulled it in a little bit so that green is kind of showing? I like that too. So you can add your own little personal touches. Oh, I was going to say though, so to cover up the edge, and this again, I used paper. I guess I made all these before I had the um, Claudine Helmuth. And this has a little bit of glitter on it, but it's not cracking. But I just like to cover that area where the... Um, spine meets the cover with a little bit of ribbon or you know this one I did ribbon too I did two colors of ribbon to just like pull the colors of the piece I fussy cut these words out from the pattern paper I fussy cut out this butterfly and these flowers to kind of pull that up this section up here I really love how this one turned out and you just use coordinating papers so yeah I even put the ribbon on the okay so that was a thicker ribbon that I used and then I used the thinner brown ribbon to pull in the brown and put some flowers and stickle them up so for this one I mean I don't know I'm gonna play around with some ribbons and I'll be right back and I'll show you how it turned out okay so I'm back it's all done and I'm gonna come to the side again but I'm down I, I put the um, legs down a little bit on the um, tripod so it's done I just fussy cut out and that's why what I love about like this stack, this is the page with the house on it. And so I just cut out the elements, the hearts, I cut out Dream Big. I used, um, I cut off this little birdie and I used um, one of my buttons. And I did adhere that down with glossy accents. And also, when you cut the shank off these buttons, sometimes they come apart. Like, you can see that there's like a little, it's it's in pieces. So I use glossy accents to glue him all back together. Um, when I glued the paper onto paper, I used my wet glue, my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. But then when I went onto the fabric, I did use Fabri-Tac. And I love Fabri-Tac. And this is why people just use hot glue guns, because they just think that the hot glue, and it does, it works, but I've had it pull off before, so I just don't trust it. But on fabric, I use Fabri-Tac, so I just put a little fabric under these two ends because of the canvas. I ended up using a piece of lace. Where did I put it? This is just, I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. I want to say Hobby Lobby. It's just a decorative trim a lace trim and it was like a cream color which I love because of the white it showed up because I don't know if you can see it and now you can't see it but under the eave of this house was a little strip of lace that was drawn on there I'm gonna find it here where the heck are you little sucker here it is there's lace see it and so I tried to find something that would kind of go like that to make it three-dimensional and I thought this lace looked pretty cool so I glued that on with Fabri-Tac again um, the rest of it I glued with my Scotch quick dry adhesive it was if it was just paper to paper I put a little bit of the Fabri-Tac under here and it is adhered if it goes on to fabric I'm telling you so this heart was adhered with the Fabri-Tac and this section of my battery died uh, this section of dream was with Fabri-Tac and this section of Dream was just with the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. So I just like to put that out there because honestly I have enough experience now I have glue all over me 
that I just know like different adhesives work for different things so you should just use what works best so here it is my little book this is probably um, glossy accents takes probably the longest to dry I definitely don't want to mess with anything really if it's um and even though that's on fabric glossy accents is just one of those that's a really strong adhesive but it doesn't dry quickly so I'd rather use the Fabri-Tac that's my thing with glossy accents because some people just use glossy accents for everything and that is a great way to go too but it just doesn't dry as quick like this um, Fabri-Tac is dry um so that's my book I love it. I think it turned out super duper cute. Um, the pocket works just fine. See, you can put stuff in your pocket. And I just love them. I really, really like this one, how it turned out um, with Fussy cutting that out. I did that on, let's see, I put everything over there. Um, no, I didn't actually. These are, uh, I just Fussy cut out this is from the same paper stack. I made these little um, mini books with that same paper stack. I actually just fussy cut out fly and glued that on. Um, but this paper was just there and I just added the bling and a, and a little punched butterfly up there. Um, this one is actually, yes, this one I did the same thing. I used the, the flower paper, but I put you make life beautiful. I fussy cut those out and just glued them on as my... Um, embellishments for that and just to keep it real simple um, so I'm having fun with this paper stack it's it's like a um, mixed media type of paper stack so I think I'm gonna make another one of them I just really love it but I wanted to give you the measurements for the little one just in case anyone wants to try it if you happen to be able to find these these are three and a half by five um, and like I said I think I'm pretty sure I got these at my dollar store it was when I was going around looking for junk for my junk journals. So that is the size that I used for these little ones. Um, they're the same construction, the same exact construction. I used um, file folders probably for my covers. Um, I really like this one. This one turned out cool. The colors are just beautiful. And the blue, it pulls the blue in. I had this lace, like so I love it. Um, but here, let me give you the measurements for that. So this, I'm gonna put the, I'll put this in the description box. The small covers are five and a half by four. Um, the paper covers that go, that you cover the, the cover with, six and a half by four and a half. For the spine, you need that two by six and a half. And you should still leave at least a half an inch room. Definitely, I mean, still go for a half an inch of room because I did one just FYI, the first one, ugh, oh, and it's not here. The very first one I did, I didn't use, I didn't leave enough space. It's here somewhere, oh man. And when I put the book in, because I figured I would use it for something, but I don't know uh, where I put it now. Um, when I put the paper pad in, there wasn't enough room here. So you really need to leave at least a nice half inch gusset there for you to close your book and then the book stays closed it won't open back up again so that's what's important um, when I put the uh, the first one I did I didn't leave enough space and it wouldn't it didn't close right so that's what I love about these these really close um, let me get back to this so for the spine two by six and a half but when you're gluing it that's what I mean make sure you um, attach your spine with that half inch in between the covers five and a quarter by eight for the inside piece of paper that goes over the whole entire thing and then four by four for your pocket and then just score half inch half inch and then remember how we scored that and then cut the extra off and then you have your little pocket so I'll put these in the description box what was I just going to show you real quick too that I that just popped in my head um what in the world was I thinking uh all right, I don't know. It went away. I hate when that happens. Um, all right, so if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. And I hope you liked it. I hope I covered everything. I'm going to go put this together now and have a look at it and see what it looks like. And thanks for watching.